Welcome. Today, as we talk about iPad productivity, what I'm going to walk you through is how I, as a web developer, literally, see my iPad right there, use my iPad to do everything. I've got a Mac, and it sits over on a shelf in clamshell mode. You can see the corner of the monitor, I think, that hasn't even been turned on today. It hasn't been turned on most of the week. Actually, that's not true. On Monday, I need to charge my watch. I need to charge my Fitbit. So I plugged it in for that. Yes, I plugged in a $3,000 laptop to be a glorified charger. So what I'm going to walk you through is the basics of how I use my iPad day in, day out to build websites, to build complex WordPress sites, to build membership sites, to do basically everything, even editing this video. Uh, I do, in fact, until today, I was recording off my iPhone 6S, which is sitting over there somewhere. Right now I'm recording off the, I guess, the personal camera we've had for a long time, the Canon 60D. Um, but up until just now, I've been doing everything off the iPhone, off my iPad, because um, it had the best, I guess, the best quality and the best sound that I could get out of anything. So new mic up there. Um, I've been able to improve the quality of this camera for my audio, and then able to use its, you know, its superior image quality for everything else. So join me. We're gonna turn around. We're gonna dive into the iPad. We're gonna dive into how I use it, the apps I use, and you know, some of the problems, some of the bad things about it. Um, but overall. Perfect. I've been using the iPad for development for months now, uh, and I did a write-up of this as well, which I'll link to in the show notes below over on thesweetsetup.com, which I help build that site, and I work on that site all the time while using my iPad only, being mobile with it, uh, yeah, and all the writing for it as well. That way, join me. So like I said, what we're going to look at is the web development tools that I use to do development full-time from my iPad for clients, for everything. And one of the key pieces to that is Blink Shell. I'm gonna open that, and you can see Blink here, and I've actually turned on, this is an extra feature you have to have Touch ID or your passcode. So I'm gonna hit my pass, my Touch ID, and I'm in Blink. Now, Blink is really just a shell. This is actually also open source software. So you can grab this anywhere you want if you'd like. And there'll be a link in the show notes to where you can get it on GitHub if you wanna compile it for yourself. Yes, I will do a better review of this later uh, so that you can you know, get all the features of it. So what do I like? Now, one of the things that I like is Mosh. So Mosh, I'll start typing that and it will auto-complete and tab, oh, music, Mosh. And then you can even see that I have three different options for places to connect. Um, now I'm gonna do my, which is for my DigitalOcean server. And this is a shortcut, which has all the um, information in it on how to connect to my DigitalOcean server. I hit enter. I'm going to ask for my passphrase for my key. And that's it. Now you can actually see in this instance, I have two Mosh connections that died earlier. And the reason I use Mosh is because it's a much more robust protocol than SSH for um, connections that may break up, like you'd find on an iPad, especially on cellular ones. So I can kill those by hitting kill, and then I'll type the number 14263 and kill 45. 20. And so now I'm on my server and I have all the Unix stuff that I want. So I use server pilot on there. And if I type site, I'm just going to take you into, here's a list of all my sites. And then once I'm in here and I'll get into my personal site, I use Vim. And now I always used Vim before um, to edit all of my work, even on my Mac. So this was not a big change for me um, to get over to um, the DigitalOcean where I host this. So it's been great. Um, yeah, and you can see there'll be a link in the show notes again to my Vim configuration specifically for WordPress and PHP development. You'll find that uh, in the show notes as well. It's avail freely available on GitHub. I've been using it for a number of years. So now there are more features to Blink Shell. I'm going to actually quit. Oh, clear. Oh. So you can also like hit Command T. Now I have another tab open and I can switch back and forth between them quite easily, right? So this is just a normal Blink Shell you'll find is sometimes on one, I'm running like a grunt command to build my files. Uh, and that's running in the background or I'm running, I know I have usually I have three, I have one with grunt running, one with git running and one with my vim and my full editing in it. So that's one of the pieces that I use. I'm gonna log out of that server. Oh. There we go, so I'm logged out. And now one of my next tools that I use is dash. Now dash I used for um, Mac already. Dash is a great tool because it has all of the doc sets I really needed. It has Font Awesome, Grunt, you can see them all there. 
and it's quite easy to use. So if I wanted to search something in WordPress, I wanted to search, you know, what's the image or template functions. I can search template and it shows me, you know, the different things, functions, um, shows me different scan slugs, get template. This is a like template function in WordPress. It shows me lots of different things in there. Or if I want to do markdown, right? It gives me, here's the markdown guides. So there's lots of stuff in here that I need, right? All my Vim guides if I want them. So I can go through and I know exactly what I need. Dash is excellent. And to install a new doc set, you go in and you just search the doc set you want. If I wanted, uh, I don't know, Ansible, let's see. So I can install that, I hit the cloud and I'd be good to go. So that's it um, for Dash. That's another key to really what I'm doing and how I make my work happen, right? Now I'd switch back and forth with just the standard command tab that you have in iOS, that's great. So, and then the next one I really need is Ergo Web Tools, which isn't in my web folder. So we'll just open that up by going Web, Web Tools. There you go. And I am, let's go to, let's go to my site as well. Curtis McHale. Excellent. So what's great about Ergo Web Tools is this button up in the top right hand corner where I have my full inspector. You can see I can open things up. I can browse right through. If I say I wanted to add, add, add an attribute, so I can hit add attribute on the one side. I can type style display none. And then I'd hit save. And look, I just deleted my whole web page. Not really because it's you know just a style, but that's not a problem. I can also go delete attribute and it's gonna come back. That's great. Now, one of the paid features of this, and I'll have the pricing and the link in the show notes to that is the console. So this is giving me all the JavaScript errors. Evidently, there's a few on my site. And you can start digging through these if you want. You can see the errors or the logs, or you can just clear it as well. There's also settings. So I can adjust that. I can also give it a at a custom user agent. I could give it a custom user agent string. So I'll do this sometimes when I want to pretend I'm Safari for the Mac, and then I'll have a custom user agent string in there. Another one of the cool spots, if I just close that, as you can see right over here, I can do select size. So this gives me a whole bunch of different resolutions I can use. I can say I'm an iPhone SE. Now this is still identifying as a, an iPad. So if I go to select size and I was just choose, hey, give me a MacBook. Now this is a wider viewport, yes, but it is still identifying in the user agent as a MacBook. So I would have to go in and edit my user agent string if I wanted to be able to really identify myself as something else, right? And then you can even say I'm a, you know, iMac 5K if I wanted, or I'm an iPad in this in a portrait orientation. And then if you don't like that, you just want to like test your breakpoints, you can adjust it. And you can say I just go back and forth and decide exactly how I want everything to be. So that's great. And then my final piece really is I'll open up my web folder again, Coda. Now Coda is good for many things. Coda is good. I'll sign into my digital ocean again. All right, and I'm in my server now. And now I don't have the nice, um, you know, the site alias put in my, which is again, put into my shell to jump me right to where I want to go. So I have to dig through. It's quite a good uh, FTP client as well. Now what I have found, unfortunately, and I will have to dig deeper into FTP clients, is that sometimes it's just really slow sometimes. And so I need to figure that out, especially for, you know, lots of little files. So if I'm moving a, some node folder around, it's a problem that way. But it's a decent FTP client. If I dive into my personal site and if I grab, oh, something out of my theme. I grab that and I can edit in Coda. You can see I've got my nice theme sitting right there. You can see everything I want in it. I can scroll up and down. If I hit save, it would get saved. And there's also find and replace if I want to. Now what it doesn't have is full text code searching or full searching of my code base like I have in Vim, which is why I really use Vim on the server side most of the time. But it does allow me to quickly move a file back and forth, right? I can drag and drop it and it's moved over. That's great. Because something I need to do long term is do a better review of Coda and of FTP clients to see which one really is the fastest for iOS because the Coda what I'm using right now is passable, but it's not stellar. And I'd love some more features like if I want to move a theme, I want to ignore the whole node file in there. I just don't even want it. I don't want the folder because it's, it usually doesn't matter for deployment on things. 
so I could ignore it. And then I say the final thing that I've really mentioned a couple times is that DigitalOcean is a key to what I use. So we can go to my browser, we'll go to Firefox, let's bring up DigitalOcean. So we're in DigitalOcean, and what I use is a currently a $10 server on it, but you can even use less. So for each client, uh, for my sites, all of my sites mostly are on it, one $10 server, which works great. All right, you can see there it's two gigabytes a month. I have memory, 50 gigs on my SSD disk, and two terabytes of transfer. I have no problems with that. Um, for a client, so even if I, you know, a higher security client needs everything segregated, if I'm paying $5 a month for a DigitalOcean server, that is plenty for a single client. And I can work on it, I can set up my Vim config there, I can set everything up without any problem, and that's still drastically cheaper than what the new MacBook Pros and any, any of the Apple computers cost me in a year, really. Right? Five by, that's what, $60 a year? $60 a year is what it costs me to run essentially a Linux machine somewhere else and have no problems with it. And then for $449, I can buy the, I guess, the newer education-focused uh, iPad, and that's what it costs in Canada, and I am just ready to go. I don't really have to worry about anything. That's my whole computer uh, for a year. So I could spend, buy a new iPad of that caliber every year and spend years before I'm even close to what the MacBook would cost me, and then I'd still be having to buy a new MacBook anyways. So instead, I'm just continuing to leverage, like I got more speed out of my DigitalOcean because they upgraded it recently, which was great. And ultimately, my iPad becomes a client for those other tools. So that's how I run my web development business for WordPress right off my iPad. I, you know, in this week, I've turned on my computer once because I needed to charge a bunch of stuff at once, and it has the most USB ports hooked up to it that need power. So that was the only reason it got turned on. Yes, my iPad or my Mac became a glorified charger this week, a you know, $1,800 glorified charger at the time. I'm not saying I won't go back to a Mac, I won't go back to a desktop style computer, but for now, this is what I'm doing for, you know, for about almost a year now, and I'm quite happy with the setup. If you like this, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments, in the show notes below. Ask me whatever you'd like. I can give you more information on my setup. I will be digging into each of these applications that I've used at a deeper level in the future. For now, this is what I do to be a web developer full-time off an iPad 9.7-inch iPad Pro.